Hello, I am Richel Bulderbeek and I am a PhD at the University of Groningen and I am part of GLives and more specific I am part of the theoretically and evolutionary community ecology group led by Rampal Chan. In this presentation it's called from alignment to base factor. I will show you how to get from an alignment to a Bayesian posterior using um, any Bayesian prior and then compare these models using a base factor. The goal of this presentation is to show some aspects of phylogenetic research and I will be mostly driven by research questions. I will follow a Bayesian approach and I will do a Bayesian model comparison and I will use two things. I will use BEAST2 which is a beginner friendly uh, popular phylogenetic tool and um, I'll be using Babette which is an R package which does exactly the same as BS2 but then from R. So the research questions I'll be talking about is that uh, let's say here I have a phylogeny and I've taken this from Wikipedia of primates that want to know whom of these species are closest related who of these species lived when and when did their common ancestors lived and which models um, do we have to use to get to the best conclusions like can we use a very simple model uh, but at the risk of uh, having an oversimplification or should we use a more complex model at the risk of overfitting the data the first research question I'll be answered answering is um, whom are closest related. So uh, the Wikipedia page is very clear cut about this. They say that the Siamang is always the outgroup of the other four taxa, but is it really that clear cut? So let's take a look at what we have what we'll be working from, which is a DNA alignment. So I'm using a DNA alignment called primates.fast, it's a faster file, and I've taken this from the Beast 2 website as an example, that they put it there as an example um, alignment file. And uh, this is how it looks like. So here we have the five taxa. Here we see their um, the nucleotides, and there are more than 700 nucleotides. So from that, we're going to create a phylogeny to answer the question whom are closest related? And the first, I'll be, but the first demonstration, I'll be using Beast 2. BS2, it's an abbreviation of Bayesian Evolutionary Analysis by Sampling Trees. This is the, the BEAST book. It's a widely used tool and it's very easy to get started and I will show you uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment. So, um, so let's, let's do this analysis. So I've prepared my computer and what I'll be doing is I'll be running Beauty. Beauty is part of the BEAST2 tool suite and uh, well I can't make the letters any bigger so if you can't read it I'm sorry um, so with beauty we're going to set up our Bayesian analysis we're going to import the alignment and we're going to use the primates alignment and it's a nucleotide substitution uh, it's a nucleotide alignment so we're going to use that one and we're going to leave everything at its default except the MCMC so the 100 thousand is enough for this run. You should use longer chain lengths. I'll show you also why in a moment. Uh, except for this we're going to use all the defaults. So we're going to use the Jukes Cantor 69 nucleotide substitution model. More about that in a moment. And we're going to use a Yule birth death model as a speciation model. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to save this file. I call it one. And uh, so I've set up the the beast 2 file and I'm going to just run it now. So now beast 2 is run for a hundred thousand MCMC states and um, so we it produces a lot of posterior phylogenies and uh, parameter estimates. To view these we're going to use a tool also part of beast 2 called density tree because it beast 2 does not create one phylogeny but many and I'm going to show you these now. So here we have BS2. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to add font labels. Uh, I'm going to uh, 
increase the font label so we can actually read them. And what we're looking at now is, uh, I'm going to, of the last 50%, these are the phylogenies in our posterior. So in a posterior, the more likely, um, the more likely uh, parameter estimates and uh, phylogenies are represented more often. And we can see that mostly Siamang is the outgroup of the other four groups. But we also see that in some cases it was the orangutan that was the outgroup. So here we show that it's not that clear cut. We only showed it in a couple of times. Uh, it may be that the orangutan is the outgroup. Well, we're also going to verify how strong we can draw this conclusion. And we're going to do another tool to do so. So Tracer is not part of Beast 2, but it's very, uh, like it's also downloadable and it's tailored to uh, analyze these same results. So this is Tracer. We're going to import uh, the log that Beast 2 generated and we can see, uh, so here we see um, an a Bayesian trace of the posterior so the posterior is estimated to be at this value for example the tree likelihood is something like this uh, and, and so on, so there are some parameter estimates, so the birth rate for example is estimated to be like this but the most important thing to look at are the effective sample sizes so here we see that the effective sample sizes are 91 uh, which is not enough for a proper inference um, to get it published basically. You need to have an ESS of at least 200 according to the Beast book to get it published or that's that then you can be rather sure. But well for the sake of the shortness of this video I have not ran this um, run any longer. Alright so back at to the presentation I, um, so uh, did, I did all that so these are some pictures that just show the same thing so the conclusion is that, well, this is the most likely um, ordering, the most likely cladogram, but in not all of the cases, this is the case. So it is not as clear cut as Wikipedia shows, but on the other hand, that's also fine. The question is, of course, how often is, uh, is this different? So for that, we're going to use Babette, which is an R package to do the same things as Beast 2 and its accompanying tools um, do. So this includes Beauty, Beast, Tracer and Dancer 3. It's all combined in Babette. And I'm just going to parse the trees that were generated that I just opened also in Dancer 3. And I'm going to plot the Dancer 3 here. So you see it looks a bit different. You can tailor this uh, a bit. I did tailor it a bit in the back end uh, to make the, the font bigger and the lines a bit wider. but Next to this, this is the default way uh, a posterior, uh, the phylogenies in a posterior are displayed using Babette. But still, we don't know how often uh, the gorilla is the outgroup uh, instead of the Siamang. So we can count that now. So here are some functions, and you don't need to completely grasp the functions. So below, we count how often we find the the, the canonical topology, which is the topology on Wikipedia in this case. And I use a very um, simple way to do it, a bit hackerish, that if you have a tree, and if I convert it to NUIC using a right tree, then if at the end of that NUIC I found the Siamang is there, um, if that matches, if I find it like that, and then it, it really exists, then we know it has the canonical topology. And what then I do is I count those of many trees, I count how often they follow that canonical topology and then I just display it on the screen. So 44 out of 50 follow that topology and 6 don't. So we did, uh, so it's not as clear a cut, we have already shown that. The effective sample size is below the recommended 200, so you should use a longer beast run to get it published. All the nodes don't have a date, so we don't know 
what happened when. And we used a very simple uh, nucleotide substitution model, Jukes Cantor 69, and we used a very simple speciation model, the Yule model or the pure birth model. Well, we can do this same analysis only using Babette, and I'll show you here now. Um, so actually, this is already everything. So you need to call Babette Run on your FASTA file. The MCMC, I've, I've created it here. I've used the same chain length as I've just showed you. I'm going to use only the last 50 trees and from that I'm going to count the canonical topologies. This is a different. This has a different random number generator so there is a different value coming out of it. But this is just fine. It's to show you how easy it is to use Babette only. So the next research question is who lived when? So we have our cladogram here, our undated phylogeny, but we don't know uh, when the humans and chimp split up. Let's say we're interested in finding out when the human and chimp had their most recent common ancestor. So what I'll be doing is I'll be assuming that all these five primates, they have a crown age of 17.58 million years ago. I took this from an article from Purvis in 1995, but you can use any value of course, it's just an example. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to use, a, first I'll be cleaning up my files again, so I'm going to remove these files and I'm going to run beauty again. So with beauty I'm going to set up the same alignment, which is nucleotides. I'm going to use an MCMC chain length of a hundred thousand. And now I'm going to add an MRCA prior, most recent common ancestor prior. I'm going to use all groups. I'm going to label them, I'm going to call them all. And I'm going to set that the age at when they um, that when they uh, that this this crown age is normally distributed with a mean of 17.58 million years ago and I'm going to use a very narrow standard deviation on this right, now I'm going to save it again I'm going to call it 2 because it's our second research question and now I can run beast 2 again on that beauty input file and here we have our results. So let's take a look at the density now because there's a new posterior generated. We're going to load that posterior and first I'm going to increase the lines width. I'm going to Increase the label size so you can see it. I'm going to add a grid so you can see at what time happened when. And I'm also going to increase the font size here so that you can see when everything happened. So what we can see is that the human and the chimp, their common ancestor, lived around 6 million years ago. So that's uh, that's nice and dandy and now I can use tracer if you really want to to show that the effective sample sizes are again not high enough and let's take a look the effective sample sizes are a bit lower now um, but so you should run a longer run so uh, these are the pictures I could show the, the, the trace again but the most important thing are the effective sample sizes are still low so now we're going to um, but we still don't know from our data, we, we eyeballed that it was approximately 6 million years ago, but we want to calculate it from the data. So we can calculate that, so I create a function called get divergence time of a tree, and I'm going to look for the labels human and chimp, and then I calculate the distance between the nodes, um, and I divide it by 2 because I want to find the crown age, uh, the, the time in million years ago, not the evolutionary distance. And then I simply, of multiple trees, I just uh, 
accumulate all those divergence times. And um, so if you parse the trees using Babette and you take only the last 50 ones because that's your burn in, you take the mean of those divergence times, you get 6.16 years ago as a mean age that their common ancestor, that the diversion, uh, division between the two species started. Of course, you could use the median or uh, any different value, you can make a histogram of this, but this is how you can do it. Uh, so the effective samples are still below 200, and we use a simple side model and speciation model again. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to do this complete analysis within Babette. So within Babette, I need to do the same thing. I need to specify the crown age that it's normally distributed around 17.58 million years ago with a standard deviation of 0.01. That's a distribution of that crown age. And I'm going to but and then I have to create a MRCA prior in which I'm going to use all the taxa, the taxa names, so I use all the taxa names here. And then I get as and then I have that prior set up. And then I'm just simply going to call Babette run on that FASTA file with the MCMC I always use and using that MRCA prior. Of that I use only the last 50%, 50 trees. Of those things I get the divergence times and then I take the mean from that. And then I get more or less the same value. So the so well the, so this is well easy. So the next research question is which models should we use? Because up until now we've used the Jukes Cantor 69, the glutide substitution model. So if we have four nucleotides here, the Jukes they have rates in which they can mutate to one another in in time. And the Jukes Cantor 69 model assumes all those rates are equal. Whereas the GTR is at the other end of the extreme, it assumes that all rates they can be different. So if we do our inference, then we know that the GTR model will always get arrive at a better fit uh, of the data because it has more degrees of freedom to do so. But we should somehow take into account that the GTR model is also the more complex model. So uh, in other uh, areas you have the uh, the Akiyaki information criterion, the AIC. Uh, you have the, of course, but we also have the Bayesian information criterion. But I'll be using the base factor to take that into account as well, and that works awesomely. So uh, I have to repeat. So I'll have to 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 spell this a bit out. So this is Bayes theorem, in which we have the likelihood multiplied times by prior divided by the marginal likelihood is our posterior. Our likelihood is what we know at the moment, or what we assume at the moment, to be the case. Our priors are assumptions, and the posteriors are updated belief. The marginal likelihood is usually not very important. It's a normalization factor, which causes that all uh, uh, likelihoods um, times priors are equal to 1. It's a normalization. Uh, and it's very hard to calculate as well. And BS2 doesn't need that marginal likelihood because it uses the ratios between posteriors. Well, and instead of using ratios of posteriors of this whole thing, you can just use the ratio of the things above uh, above the fracture line. So B so BS2 doesn't need to calculate that marginal posterior, and it's very hard to calculate. But would we have this marginal likelihood? Then the base factor is very easy to calculate. We just divide them by one another. So let's so A would be our focal model, B would be our second, the, the other model we want to compare. We simply divide them. The cool thing is that if you have a more complex model, the marginal likelihood like dilutes um, the likelihoods uh, more. So there's a natural penalty in that. Uh, so that's that's just what we want. And if you have that base factor, it's also very easy to interpret. So if your base factor is from 0 to 10, to 0 to 1, there's, there's a negative evidence for A being better than B. And the more and more 
the base factor increases, let's say above 100, then we can say that there's a device decisive argument of for the first model. Well, because of course we can also divide B, divide it, we can also take B into a focal model and a, we, we can just flip them around. So if we have a negative base factor, let's say uh, 0.00001, which is very small, then we can say that it's decisively at the advantage for the other model. So if you have a very small uh, base factor, it means that uh, the, the evidence points to the other model, and if it's less than 100th, that means that there's decisive evidence for the other model. So to estimate the marginal likelihood, recently a paper, or rather recently a paper came, came out by Maturana et al. And they use, so there are multiple ways to calculate, to estimate the marginal likelihood. And here they use a nested sampling approach, that's the approach they call it. And it's very cool because it's already added in Beast 2. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Beast 2. But first I'll be cleaning up all the files I'm not needing. And then I'm going to run Beauty again. Because Beauty not only helps you to set up the model, but it also has a package manager. You go to File, you're going to Manage Packages, and you will need to install the NS package. So I already, already installed it. If you don't, you, you click here and it's installed. It's very easy. And what I'll need to do, so I'm going to import the alignment, which is a nucleotide alignment. I'm going to set the MCMC to 100,000. And that's all I can do. There's no. Um, so, Beauty does not provide for an interface for the nested sampling package. So, I'm just going to have to save it. I'm going to call it 3 because it's our third research question. Um, but I will also, because we'll be doing a model comparison, I'm also going to use the GTR model. So, I'm going to set it up with a more complex model. So, I'm going to call this GTR. And to make it more symmetrical, I'm just going to call the GC69 models. I'm going to save it as I'm going to uh, so I'm going to save the GTR model as GTR, and I'm going to save the Jukes Counter 69 model as Jukes Counter 69. How original of me! I'm going to delete three XML file and here are our XMLs and we need to modify those by hand. That's not very complex to do. Uh, basically in my uh, presentation I've set up the line at the wrong slide but well, let's do it here. So you need to modify a line with this code because we'll have to modify it. So I'm going to put so this is what I need to add at the right spot, so the Jukes Counter 69 models, this is the XML, this is how it looks like, and I'm going to replace this line by this line, so it uses the nested sampling approach, and I'm going to do the same for the GTR model here. So, so now I've modified uh, both XMLs, and now I can use Beast 2 to run those. I'm going to use Beast 2 on the Jukes Counter 69 model, which uses the nested sampling approach. You can see if you would scroll up, you can see that it uses the different package. And here is our marginal likelihood of the Jukes Counter 69 model. I'm going to put it in a file here. This is the marginal likelihood of the Jukes Counter 69 model. And now I'm going to do it for the GTR model as well. GTR. And we'll copy paste it. Yes, I'm going to overwrite all the files because I'll be only using uh, the marginal likelihood and just copy paste those here. So this is the marginal. These are the marginal likelihoods, and we can already see that the GTR model has a way, um, way higher marginal likelihood, and this is a decisive difference. So we can already see from here that it differs about by a factor of a hundred. Uh, this is a natural log, uh, but still this will be way beyond this magical value of 100 uh, 
sometimes. So uh, I put uh, the same figures here and these are approximately the same values. We see that the difference is e to the power minus 1 to 5 which is a decisive support for the GTR model. So the Jukes Cantor 69 model you can safely say that this was a simplification and you should use the GTR nucleotide substitution model in this case. Well, again, I can show you in trace of what the effective sample size are, but they will be even less than the recommended 200. Also, the setup of the nested sampling setup was also too short. And we've only compared two models, and these were only nucleotide substitution models. We can also uh, compare uh, speciation models. So we used the Yule model now, but we could use also a birth death model, for example. And so we can do a more thorough analysis. And you can see that I already had to lot, do a lot of different things in my terminal and using all the tools and clicking everywhere. So Babette can help out here as well. So when you use Babette, it is very simple to do so. Instead, now we have to use a different MCMC object. We're going to create that using a nested sampling. With the nested sampling approach, we use the same chain length. And we're going to use a sub-chain length, uh, which is used by the nested sampling of 5000 which I also did earlier on. And then I'm just going to run a bet again with that FASTA file with the Jukes Contra 69 side model. I put it here explicitly, but normally it's there implicitly. Using that nested sampling MCMC. And we're going to use the Beast 2 uh, binary instead of the Java jar file. And when you use a nested sampling, uh, like we do here, then it adds something else to the output, the results of the NS, the nested sampling, and we can store that thing. Likewise for the GTR model, so you can see it's very similar, only the side models are changed. So and then we can simply of that nested, sam nested sampling object, we, uh, we can divide the marginal likelihoods, but because they are log likelihoods we can just subtract them from one another, uh, take them e to the power of that value, and here we say, see the base factor in favor of the Jukes Cantor 69 models. Well, it's not exactly in favor, because it's less, way, way, way less than 1. It's uh, actually strongly in favor of the GTR model, because if this would be below 100, uh, 100 then it would already decisive support for GTR, so here it's clearly in favor of the GTR uh, model. So the overall conclusion of this presentation is that Beast 2 is awesome. It offers a flexible framework to answer many questions. And you can set up everything. It's, it's very beginner friendly, thanks also to Beauty and Tracer and Density. But um, if you want to do a more comparison, then Babette uh, allows you to do the same thing from R and then you can do then you can use for loops like uh, and do a more bigger analysis. So um, this is a YouTube video so there are no questions. Instead I wish you a very happy day and I hope you will enjoy Babette and Beast 2 of course and have a nice day.